1900 kilometers away from Canada, pretty far into the Atlantic Ocean. Thank you if you're a man. If you're a woman, you say obrigada, and the tallest point lies in the middle of a roundabout. on all countries in the world going alphabetically. We have now come to the P countries and today we're zooming in on Portugal. I was in Portugal in 2019. I made a total of three videos for my trip, which was pretty stressful involving a missed flight and a lost laptop. There's a link in the description if that sounds tempting. Okay, let's zoom in. Portugal lies in southwestern Europe on the Iberian Peninsula and is the westernmost country of mainland Europe. Only Iceland lies more west. Portugal only borders one country, Spain, and to the south and west it borders the Atlantic Ocean. But Portugal is more than just this. Portugal also has two archipelagos in the Atlantic Ocean. First Madeira lying off the coast of Morocco, an archipelago of the islands Madeira, Porto Santo and the Desertas Islands. And we also have the Azores, about 1400 kilometers west from the mainland, 1900 kilometers away from Canada, pretty far into the Atlantic Ocean. This archipelago is composed of nine volcanic islands, the largest town being Ponta Delgada on Isla de São Miguel. Both the Azores and Madeira are autonomous regions with their own regional governments. And they also both lie in the Macaronesia region, a part of the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Northern Africa and Southern Europe together with the Spanish Canary Islands and the country Cape Verde. The northernmost point lies here, bordering Spain, at the Minho River, close to the town Sevide. The easternmost point lies here, in the Douro River, close to this dam bordering Spain. The southernmost point does not lie here, it does not lie here either, it's even further south, to this little uninhabited island, part of the Savage Islands. And the westernmost point is part of the Azores, all the way here close to Isla das Flores, meaning flower island, but lying on its own little island. Here it says the westernmost point of Europe. This point actually lies more west than Iceland, so you can argue that Portugal actually lies more west. Look, we're almost halfway to North America. Portugal comes to number 119 in area, about the same size as Hungary and Jordan, with almost 10.3 million inhabitants. Portugal comes to number 89 in population, about the same as Sweden. The population density becomes 112 people per square kilometers and Portugal comes to number 72 in population density. Not too dense, not too empty. Now let's look at life expectancy. In 1960, the Portuguese could expect to live for 63.4 years. But in 2019, life expectancy had risen to 82 years. So if you want to live a long life, Portugal could be the country for you. But where would you live? Well, most people live in the capital city of Lisbon, or Lisboa in Portuguese, with a population of a little more than a half million. Other cities are Porto and Braga in the south, and Setubal, a little south from Lisbon. Yes, the official language is Portuguese. And another language that is a recognized regional language is Mirandese, spoken in a small area in northeastern Portugal that is similar to Portuguese, but it's its own language. Portugal in Portuguese is Portugal. Okay, I don't speak Portuguese and I think it's a little hard to pronounce, but hola is hello and obrigado means thank you if you're a man. If you're a woman, you say obrigada. The name Portugal derives from the place name Portus Cale, a city that lies close to what is now Porto. Portus meaning port or harbor. Cale is less clear where it comes from, but Cale is the origin of today's Galicia, this region in northwestern Spain. Let's explore the capital city first. So Lisbon lies here, close to the Atlantic Ocean. And here we can see the river Tagus streaming right past it. Here is a nature reserve, open until one, then it closes. Let's see what we have in the city center. What is this? Elevador de Santa Justa? Ah, oh, it's a lift. So you can get a view over the city, huh? And we have the Lisbon Cathedral. That's a beautiful building. And Arco da Rua Augusta. Yes, this is beautiful. I've been here. I love the yellow colors. Yes, yeah, so this is Lisbon. This is that big plaza. And then you can walk through this and then get to this large streets. 
Stradivarius women's clothing store. They have a Zara. It's just like walking in Lisbon. Let's turn left into the street. Yeah, they look like tables at a restaurant. It's a sunny day in Portugal. Let's see what happens when I go here. Okay, I see a big wall with some graffiti. And there we have a restaurant. Restaurante Tipico Taverna del Rey. Does that mean Tavern of the King? Fadush. That I do not understand. Rua de Sao Pedro. Look at that street, it's really narrow. Cobblestone streets. And green doors. Green details on the buildings. Looks pretty good. Esquina de Alfama. There are some stairs and plants. Yeah, this is Portugal. Okay, I want to go to inland Portugal. I'm just going to go somewhere around here. Right here and see what it looks like. This area looks pretty dry, really. There aren't many trees. The land looks a little yellow. And there are small towns here and there with some pools. Mercado Municipal da Taruguem. Restaurante a Bolota. Campo de Futsal. Bar o Forno. Look, it's a little hilly here. But there aren't any really tall mountains. This looks like a beautiful place to just drive around and see the landscapes. Okay, the road maybe stopped here. Oh well. And then stop for an ice cream maybe. Here the land gets a little greener again. Depends on how the pictures are taken, of course. Okay, and I also want to go to the Azores and look what that looks like. Like this long island. Let's check it out. See? Steep cliffs. Mountains. Look at that. It's super green. This is a fun island. Let's see if we can see any photos. Oh yes, there are plenty of photos here. Yeah, let's just go to the top here. See what that looks like. Yes. Look at that mountain. No trees, just grass. I think. What is this blue stuff? Are they flowers? Some blue flowers here. Yeah, look like it. Huh, that looks pretty cool. It's all blue. Hmm. This is a beautiful picture. Is that a road going up that mountain top? Here we can look down at the sea and another island there. And here are some roads and buildings. This looks really cool. This is far into the Atlantic Ocean. Here is a topography map of Portugal with the Azores and Madeira. From this map, we can see that Portugal is pretty hilly and the elevation rises in the northeast where we get mountains. As well as the archipelagos, they have high elevations. I'll explain from north to south. So we can divide Portugal in two parts, north and south separated by the Tagus River, or Rio Tajo. The northern part is rugged and mountainous, with rocky hillsides and deep valleys. This area is forested, especially pine trees living right here. Going a little more south, to the area between the rivers Douro and Tejo, lies the highest mountain range in the mainland, Serra da Estrela, meaning Star Mountain Range. And the highest point in this mountain range is accessible by car. There is a road going up here, and the tallest point lies in the middle of a roundabout. It is simply called Torri, meaning tower, lying at an elevation of 1,993 meters, or 6,539 feet. Must be beautiful to drive here. Look at this view. This area in the north, and especially in the mountains, is considerably colder than the south. And here it snows in the winter. Crossing the Rio Tejo, we get to southern Portugal, called Alentejo, literally meaning beyond the Tejo. Southern Portugal is less mountainous, drier and warmer than northern Portugal. This area is dominated by rolling hills and wide plains. This is an important area for agriculture and normal species here are oak, figs, olive trees, citrus and there are vineyards used for winemaking. We can go even further south. This is called the Algarve. And if you look at the map, you can see there is a little mountain range here called Serra de Monchiqui, with mountains up to 900 meters in elevation. But the Algarve is especially popular for its sandy beaches at the southern coast. 
Just look at this, lots of beach. And Algarve also has steep cliffs, like here at Cabo do São Vicente. Wow! Those cliffs rise almost vertically for 75 meters above the sea. This area looks gorgeous. Another interesting coastline is found at the town Faro. This lagoon is called Ria Formosa. There is a lot of water connected to the sea with lots of islands. This is a natural park and lots of birds are enjoying life here. So that was mainland Portugal, but we cannot forget about the archipelagos. First, the Azores. The Azores, as you can see, are pretty mountainous. They are of volcanic origin. And here are many volcanoes, like Vulcao dos Capulinos on Fayal Island that erupted in 1958. That isn't very long ago in terms of volcanoes. And Mount Pico on Pico Island. This is a tall stratovolcano, volcano. And with its elevation of 2,351 meters or 7,713 feet, this is the tallest point of Portugal, even taller than the mountain we saw earlier in mainland Portugal. If you were to stand on top of this volcano, you could easily see the rest of the islands and some other islands. Many of the islands have steep cliffs. Just look at that. This looks beautiful. Azores is very green. There are grasslands and forests. We're moving to the other archipelago, Madeira. The two archipelagos have a lot in common. This is also of volcanic origin. It's mountainous with elevations of over 1800 meters. And there are also steep cliffs here. Look at that, Madeira is also really beautiful. The difference is actually population density. Over 250,000 people live in Madeira. About half live in the city Funchal. It's opposite side time. I measure 20,000 kilometers from the capital city Lisbon, move it around the globe and we land, yeah, pretty close to New Zealand in the Tasman Sea. Okay, there are many beautiful destinations in Portugal. I've picked out just a few, but comment down below if you know of any other great destinations in Portugal. First, I want to recommend Lisbon. I went in 2019, first to just stay in a layover on my way to Brazil with four 11 year olds, but our plane arrived late in Lisbon, so we missed our flight to Brazil. This was pretty stressful, but then we got to stay a night in Lisbon. Then on the way back from Brazil, we stopped in Lisbon again, where I forgot my laptop. Again, we had very little time and I already sat on the plane back to Norway when I found out. So a few days later, I returned to Lisbon to get my laptop. Now it's time to enjoy Lisbon! First I went to this viewpoint, Miraduro da Senora do Monte. I love getting a view over cities and this was a beautiful place to do that. Then I walked through the city center. I saw the Praça do Comercio, a really large plaza with this huge statue. Great to sit down and do some people watching. Then I like walking. I walked along the Tagus River all the way to Torre de Belém, a medieval tower where kids were playing in the water. I only just scratched the surface of Lisbon. There is lots more to see here. I can recommend the city. Okay, so after visiting Lisbon, let's travel south to Algarve. Algarve, like I explained earlier, is popular for its beaches. There are many beaches to choose from here, but a famous tourist attraction is this beach. Or is it a cave? This is called Benagil Caves. This cave is reachable by boat and it has a hole in the roof. So, well, when it rains, you're almost dry. This looks spectacular. I can imagine it being pretty packed here during the summer. So it might be smart to get here early in the morning. And when you want to get out into the sun again, there are two beaches right next to it to get your tan. The next destination lies in northern Portugal, in the Seduro River Valley. This area is one of the most scenic wine regions in Portugal. I found this route. The Duro River streams here from Spain and streams into the Atlantic Ocean in Porto. And this route will provide you with beautiful views over the river. Miraduro di Arnuzello. This is a viewpoint. You can park your car and enjoy the view. The mountains, the quiet river, and there is a train passing here too. You can also take the train if you prefer that. The next viewpoint lies right along the road. It's Miraduro di Varguelas. And here you're looking down at the valley and vineyards. Continue on the road, there are wineries along the way and villages, like Resendi, get something to eat. Along the way also lies this scenic stop, Cascada da Cinco Rodas, meaning waterfall of five wheels. Seems like a cool place to check out. Eventually you get to the city of Porto, which is a super charming city with fun little streets to walk, and a lot of life. Portugal is a super exciting country with mountains and valleys in the north and beautiful beaches in the south. 
a lot of cute little towns and two volcanic archipelagos that just look amazing. I'm glad I got to see a little part of the country, but it would be great to come back and see more of the beautiful landscapes. These were some geographical facts on Portugal. Next time we're gonna stay in Europe, we're gonna go to Poland. And we're zooming out. Thank you for watching, guys.